Okay. Oh, what's yeah, up, brother? How'd you get in here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Security let you in? Yes, what's sir. What's up, my brother? Good man. Good to see you, man. Thank you for coming yes, by. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, man. Of course. Yes, Welcome sir. To the Three Peaks Studio. You know this very well. You put up a lot of the the sound material in here, the acoustics. Yeah, we'll get. Sounds good, bro. Thank you, brother. We'll get into all that. Yeah. Throughout the video. But uh, yeah, so we are here to check out the room, check out your space, see what you're working with here, see what sure, kind of man. gear you like to use for your producing, and we'll get into what you do as a producer as well. But let's start off with like a room tour, if you'll show us around and kind of show us around your pieces of gear. We can go maybe like left to right and... Uh, you start here? Yeah, let's start awesome. off right here. Yeah, so this is like my little synth section. Um, this is the Core Gradius. This one I actually picked up from a guy named Doug, um, who's... Legendary producer as well, really good. Sold me this one, and honestly, I wasn't looking for this one, but then I, when I got it and I heard it, I was like, wow, how did I not have this in my life uh, before? So it's the Core Gradius. It's like a digital um, synthesizer, and yeah, I, I love this one. This one's really good for like top line melodies, pads. It's not very aggressive, and yeah, that's sick. Yeah, it looks dope. Yeah, it's a kind of like an un uncommon one too. Like, yeah, I haven't yeah. seen a lot of like, I see a lot of Korgs, obviously, right? But yeah, when well, people come in, the, they see the one on the bottom, like, oh, you have that, but they never recognize this one. And honestly, bro, when we produce and do collabs with other producers, this is the one that I actually end up loving more. Yeah, and it's kind of like my prize piece, personally. That's cool, man. Yeah, sick. And then in the bottom, this is the Prophet um, Six from Sequential, Dave Smith Instruments. Uh, it's kind of like a newer rendition to the old school Prophet 5. I love this one because it's it's got like so much ability to manipulate the sound and obviously I'm not as good in sound design as I want to be but this maps out to Omnisphere control so you control your oh, Omnisphere. Oh cool, yeah, yeah. nice. That's sick actually, I didn't know that. It's a cool, really hard synth. Like this one's good for basses, more like, you know, sounds that are in your face. More aggressive it. kind yeah, of sounds, yeah. Super aggressive synth. And then this one here's more mellow, so you kind of have both uh, both sides to the equation. Yeah, they, they balance very well. Like this one on the presets, when I'm going through it, there's a lot of times I'll hear a sound and be like, "Oh, this is used in like the Michael Jackson song." And yeah. Like, oh, it's Travis Scott used this preset. So it's cool to be able to go through them and recognize those instruments. Hell yeah! Yeah, that's that sick, dude. Fun. Nice man. Yeah, it's a nice little uh, little synth rack here, man. Yeah, this is where I spend a lot of the time. Honestly, like I spent hours just playing these. Oh yeah. Um, and then moving over here, this is the solid state the SL UF8 like board uh, for when I record artists uh, sticking to getting two of them but to be perfectly honest I spend more time production these days but it's nice it interfaces with Cubase which is what I use to track nice and with like FL Studio it basically just works as like a mixer all you can do is just the volume yeah um, but still just to have that at a desk level yeah that to just uh adjust on the fly that's that's awesome it's cool honestly like it's i was debating whether or not i needed it but then i got it and like for mixing it's really cool um tracking in the moment i, I still find the mouse and keyboard are probably better for it yeah to be perfectly honest but yeah it's a nice unit this is kind of a recent addition sick to the studio dope another really big use for this is uh at the very end like when i'm doing a mix before I actually start like doing the, the when you're leveling the audio, for example, you could do like a manual ride and record the path of it. That's cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you get like a balanced, even vocal without having to use a plugin that's very like digital. Yeah, exactly. Makes, like, algorithmic decisions, right? Yeah. Use your ear and just Yeah, ride, exactly. And just ride that switch, yeah. That's so, sick. Nice man. That's that. Thank you, brother. Let's uh, let's maybe talk about the um, like your kind of your monitors and your controller before we get to like the the center. Yeah, the center absolutely. channels here. So like the monitor system is all run through the PreSonus. This is the PreSonus monitoring station V2. It's cool. It gives you three different speaker options, so you could cycle through them. Whatever nice. your reference monitors are. Oh, and, and all the headphone amps too. That's sick, actually. Yeah, exactly. The headphone amps are at the top, so this one feeds into the stu into the recording booth. Nice. For the artist. Yeah, it's convenient. Um, it's got a nice aux channel in there too, which sick. is fed through that Bluetooth device. Oh, nice. Which is actually clutch. A lot of artists are like, where's your aux cord? Like, turn on your Bluetooth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually like, that's such an overlooked thing, but just for convenience, like yeah. that's that's awesome. That's like, these are like the little tricks that we want to show people. Like these are the, the kind of efficiency and like workflow yeah. Bro, type really, deals. Like, honestly, all this equipment, and that's the favorite part, right? Because like convenience. They could sit on the couch and then stream the music. There's no cord to trip yeah. over. 
Sometimes though they'll leave it on and go to the bathroom. And they'll <laughs> go on like Instagram or something. Like hear their Instagram. Like, yeah. Oh, the user phone in the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, They're gonna but, expose themselves. Yeah, yeah. Not mentioning any names, but <laughs> heard some funny stuff there. Uh, so yeah, this is the monitor station, and then through that I'm running two sets of monitors. So these ones are the Genelec 8050s. Sick. Um, they sound fantastic. Like I haven't really felt the need to put a sub on them. Very clean. Like, honestly, almost too clean. There's sometimes I'll check a mix, but yeah, it sounds good. And you go to the car and it's like, it's not as great. They're so clean that things are like acceptable that you normally wouldn't. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> they're great. I love these monitors. Yeah, they're, they're sick, man. Yeah, these are, yeah. And Genelec obviously makes amazing stuff. Like, yeah, it's, can't really say I've, I've heard a Genelec system that like I didn't like or yeah, that wasn't yeah. like good quality, right? So. Yeah, yeah like I was, bought them without even getting a chance to to hear them first. Like that, that's how much I trusted the brand. And yeah, and honestly, like it, it's one of the biggest investments probably that recently that I've made. But it's like I get a lot of compliments on how good for the sure. Is. Yeah, and like the and these are eights, right? Like the eight inch cone. Yeah, the eight yeah. Inch for cone, a room yeah. this size, like that's perfect. Especially with like the the power of the Genelex. Like yeah, this is yeah. Man, I didn't need a nice. sub. Like, I was like, I'm gonna have to buy a sub now, the Genelex sub, and then I, I wired them. I'm like I don't really need a yeah. sub at all. Yeah, no, I'm cool. sure. Well, yeah, yeah we'll we'll, uh, we'll get you to play some stuff later. We'll For hear, sure, hear bro, it. Sure, And then these ones are on the front. Then on the back, this is I got this on uh, output C. Uh, these are just the HS eights, and then there's two of them here on the rear. And nice. I have the sub on the back, which kind of is acting like a bit of a, a table here. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> My wet wipes and you know floor cleaning supplies, but. Yeah, like this stuff, I only usually play for artists when they're like, "Yo, bro, like, I want to turn it up." You know? Yeah, like, crank it. The bass bump. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. I don't really run them too much. I'm just producing solo. Nice, sick man. So yeah, that's the monitor system. Dope. In the space. Cool. Yeah, let's check out uh, this like uh, this center channel that you got here. I guess this is kind of like your main uh, tracking. Yeah, channel exactly. here. Yeah. So this is uh, the Shelford channel strip. The um, it's made by Neve as well. Really good quality sounding channel strips. I know a lot of people like to use the 500 series, like API, 550, different types of modules, but this has everything in it. So it's got a preamp, it has your EQ and your compressor. Yeah, I've, I've heard amazing things about the Shelford channel. Like obviously all, all of the Neve stuff is, al is already gonna be top quality, but this particular channel I've heard really, really good things. Bro, about. it sounds so good. And this little button here, the silk, yeah. Like huge, like gives you that warmth and present, like that harmonic sound to vocals. That's dope. Um, That's cool, man. And yeah, to have exactly each, every section, right? You have your pre, your EQ. Yeah, exactly. Your compressor. And you could turn them off depending on how you build your chain. That's you want sick. To use a different preamp, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. Then this here is like um, an EQ. It's actually a preamp as well. Uh, it's Amex, so it's actually the same, the same brand. It was just when. Yeah, just different names. Yeah, different, when he went off on his own and different started, eras. Yeah, yeah. Super cool. This one's more like punchy. I find that it's got like a punchier, snappier sound, and the the top one is little. The shelfer channel is more smooth. So different That's cool. applications. Sick. Be honest with you, I don't use that one as much as I should. Just, you got to go in the back, change the cable. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a patch bay yet. Yeah, that that can be the next uh, next edition, eh? <laughs> next upgrade for sure. Yeah. And then this is the monitor here. The um, this is actually really cool. This is a piece I get asked about a lot. I bought this from a server company, like computer servers, and they mount that on a rack, which a server rack is the same size as a music rack. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's really cool. I want to add a second monitor without blocking my view to the artist. Yeah, exactly. So it was really the only option. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this exactly. Like, this is a such a unique thing like yeah this type of stuff isn't really part of like the music world like yeah. a lot of people like in the producer kind of community might not be uh might not have been exposed to like exactly like that kind of server like computer component level type of gear yeah bro, so, i'm a uh, computer there like I, I took computer engineering in school like i you know so i that aspect is something that i brought in that's like yeah it's kind of from my past career that's fire yeah <laughs> that's sick yeah and this thing's and this thing's dope like it's it's super functional and even just like the angle to have it right there beneath your main screen, like just for sessions, like yeah. you can have your mixer window up, up there. You can have, 
your notes. You can have like there's it's it's just I'm sure amazing for workflow working with artists and producing as well, right? Yeah, I love this thing. That, like I was actually thinking of putting this there because like this actually occupies the function of a mixer. Like you said, my mixer channels are mostly here. Yeah, I, I was thinking of swapping them, but then it's nice to have that extra real estate for like. VST plugins move shit around. You know? Yeah, yeah. When yeah. the sessions get get yeah, hectic, yeah. <laughs> sick. And then you got the uh, we we see this in a few studios here. The the TC. Yeah, this is a TC Electronic um, Clarity M stereo. Uh, it's cool. It has like the ability to show like a V scope. Um, the phase scope nice. is actually kind of dope as well. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times when I'm mixing, I keep having to go into like the master channel, open plugins. You know, and it's it's not as clean. This kind of keeps it in front of you. It's giving me better mixes because I'm using it as I'm actually, like, developing the sound. Yeah. Right? It's, like, right in your face the whole time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's yeah. cool. Nice, man. Yeah, and just good to have that readout. Like, you can actually kind of get to see, get a little visual on, on what we're hearing, make sure yeah. things are... But it's like, exactly. It's visual, right? Everything's using your ears, but this kind of visualizes it, too. Yeah. And a lot of people are, are visual learners, so... That kind of info is actually super helpful. Um, For sure. This is actually the most recent edition of the studio. I just got it like two or three days ago. Nice. It's been super helpful, yeah. Cool. What's this uh, What's this stream deck here? Man, the stream deck? Oh, it's not on at the moment. Um, basically, it's like hockeys. Oh, cool. Like a clip launcher kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, so cool. if you wanted to like have, um, for example, like a shortcut key to like cue in the, the recording or to like delete stuff, you just hit the button. Nice. And it's controlled by software in your computer. So you could change the color of the tile. You could put an image in the background and just basically like shortcut keys on the fly. That's sick. Yeah. So you yeah, can just yeah. set up like just for your own workflow, like max yeah. efficiency. Exactly, bro. This thing's like a lifesaver. This comes from my trading days. I used to put like, honestly, bro, like millions of dollars of trades through these buttons. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fire. This is the exact same one. It's good luck to me. Yeah. Um, hell yeah. But yeah, that's, that's kind of hot keys. And then it's all ran through an Apollo X8. Nice. Um, in the back there. Dope. Yeah. And of course, like the UA, super industry standard. I, I had an X6. Um, all of us have had probably the, just the, the Apollo. Um, yeah. Like in some sort of format. I have the twin as well. That's yeah. I started. The Apollo twin was like fire. And then here I just needed more outputs and inputs actually yeah yeah um, for all the southboard yeah for sure i wanted to have the synths all set up so those two run on because like you hear x8 and you're like wow eight channels but if it's stereo it's actually four right so <laughs> this takes up two so i have two inputs going in four because both these are stereo nice um the mic five and then some of this gear here we'll talk about later Dumb. um but yeah the, i love the apollo i love their plugins too like oh yeah the ua plugins are they're so good yeah yeah I traveled one time with the, and with my laptop and I got my twin and bro I couldn't do anything like <laughs> I was like I rely on these guys so much yeah in my moment I realized yeah um, yeah and then here down here we have the Arturia uh, 88 key nice, nice. It's semi weighted sick uh, so it gives you a little bit more of a feel nice full size uh, yeah that full, full size. size keys right in front of you and what uh what desk is this or who who made uh, the desk uh, this desk is actually called a studio desk. Uh, this is the company name, and what was the name, the, the model name of this? I forget the model name, but Studio Desk, and they make, like, super big ones, too. Nice. Yeah, I have yeah. this whole, uh, like, the full-scale keyboard um, section, like, on the, on the rollers. Yeah, it's exactly. dope. You can yeah. pull it out. It's not attached to anything, right? It's yeah, it's, that's nice. Um, bro, Sick. they delivered this in a skid, so, like, literally... It didn't come in a box. It was like in a skid with a logistics company. Like, this yeah. is great. It wasn't even like a normal. <laughs> yeah. So when they pulled up, this guy pulls up in like a big truck. He's like, "Where do I drop the skid that's like as big as me?" I'm like, "Bro, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you." Yeah, like, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this was a fun story bringing this in. It was it was kind of a bit of a pain. Um, but yeah, I love this desk. Super nice. Sick. Yeah, it's a yeah. It's perfect size for the space and yeah. and just for like the the way that you have all your all your stuff set up here. It's. Yeah, and this little pad here, the cushion, like, honestly, best part. <laughs> um, Fire. Well, yeah, and then this is a Turia, so I'll pop that back in. You know what, actually, about this keyboard is underwhelming. When you're doing, like, for example, drums, like, percussion, the velocity is, like, really hard. You got to really, like, smash it because it's semi-weighted. Yeah. You know, it gives, like, soft, weird velocities. 
So I'm gonna actually add another keyboard for that stuff here. Nice. Small one. Cool. Sick, so, dude. Yeah, we have that. Um, and then here I have. Yes. Yeah. What's this? I haven't. I've never even seen one of these. What is this? This one here. What is this thing? Oh, yeah, this is a black box. So this is like a really cool saturation unit. Um, and they have a plugin called the the Black Box HD2. I think it's Plugin Alliance that made it. And I like it so much, and it makes it on a lot of my mix buses, a lot of vocals I use, even on my melodies in production. So I figured I was gonna just buy the real unit. I like to buy hardware that I use a lot in the software. That's cool. Right, and and when I bought it, it was like one of the biggest surprises is that on like drums, uh, like really transient sounds, the plugin actually sounds better. Yeah, eh? Yeah, yeah. Really? So I'm willing to admit, because this thing's like 5K, right? And it, but on vocals, oh my goodness, like, you could drive it so hard. It sounds yeah, clean, I was right? gonna say, and it probably still sounds so good. Yeah, yeah. exactly. The guitars, vocals, like I love this thing. I use it a lot. That's super dope. That's cool. I, like at first when I was looking, I was like, "Oh, is this a compressor?" And then I started looking at the knobs. I'm like, "No, this." Uh, yeah. I was like, I don't know what this thing does. I also think it's like <laughs> the sexiest piece of looking hardware. It is. Like, it is blue, nice. Like two tubes in there. I have to admit. Yeah. <laughs> Sick, dude. Yeah, man. Thank you. And then these two are the, like, bro, pronouncing this. So many different ways. There's Mog, Mag. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, EQ yeah. Fours. Oh, these are the e are these the preamps or are these the, the EQs? It's just EQ. Okay, yeah. cool. And they're oh, there's a little piece missing here. That that's gonna bother me. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when things like that are missing. But yeah, so it's a 500 series EQ, and I got them two in stereo. Nice to do mixing for some of the melodies. Cool during production, but it sounds really good on vocals too. That's cool. Um, do you use this on like your on like your mix bus and stuff like that as well, or? Yeah, mostly after I recorded like. This runs on a separate out that it doesn't really interfere with the mic. I use this stuff after recorded. So yeah, mixing, cool. mix bus, melodies while I'm cooking up. Like there's something about the physical equipment that gives it like a, um, I know texture is like a buzzword, you know? But, yeah. yeah. It gives no, like it's a true. color. It gives yeah. like a color, yeah. Well, and it's, and it's cool too that it's, it's more tactile and it's more like a, uh, Feels more like you're making music than like tinkering on a yeah, computer, yeah. right? Like, Something about turning knobs makes it feel real. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and hey, we we deserve that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> man. However, like you can connect with the music better, do it. Right? Exactly. So, yeah, I love these two in sequence. When it runs, the signal goes through here first, and then into this unit, uh, and then back into the Apollo. That's dope. Uh, yeah, I love oh, this man. thing for vocals. It's a good chain. And some uh, and some empty space for, for the next editions down the yeah. line. Dope, man. There's empty space here because I got an empty wallet now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> we gotta, right? We got to refill the wallet, but <laughs> yeah, like this is this kind of all the outboard gear I have. Uh, and when I select outboard gear, like I said, I try to buy things that, you know, I use a lot on in the computer in the box. Right? Yeah. So if I'm using it there in every single mix, it might make sense to check out the hardware. Otherwise, you know, it's like you can spend so much money on hardware of stuff that you never use. Yeah, and then what's the yeah. point, right? Yeah. Like how many times do you see these big studios with like a distressor that has dust all over it, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. No, exactly. And and for each each person, each creative, and especially you as a producer, like there's going to be units and things that you use that maybe other people don't use and things just become part of like your sound palette and your yeah, your exactly. style yeah and then um yeah that's that's like the interesting part of how everyone kind of puts their studio together is because there's there's always going to be those industry standard pieces that are just like works yeah, for everyone yeah. and then there's like the oddball pieces that uh it's like, like work yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah. so yeah. I agree, bro, because I think like if you're a studio that, that's running commercially to record people, you have to have all the equipment, right? Yeah. if somebody wants this sound, you got to be able to load exactly. it up. Exactly. Like, if you know your sound already and you're super clear about what you're trying to do, it, it's actually like a, a it's a great feeling. Yeah. It limits your investment and you're only buying things that you really need. So that's kind of how I built the studio. It's, you know, I don't actually operate commercially to, to record with everyone. I just work more with my artists. So being able to sit down and like define the sound you want and to build it out, it's been like a dream come true. Yeah. Like you remember this room before when you did the yeah the acoustics? It was like, yeah, it's cool. It. <laughs> it's then, come it's come a long way. Like yeah, gear wise and just the whole setup and and yeah, exactly. It's like it's just just like the the way we are as creatives. Like 
it's never done, right? Like yeah. there's always, yeah. there's always going to be, it's always just a so, progression, right? So like each, each time you get a new piece of gear, you swap something out or even sometimes just tr- like setting up your gear in a different way or routing yeah. things different. Like it's just kind of an endless, um, it's a new environment. It gives you like a new energy. Yeah. You know, sometimes you've been moving something you're like, Oh wow! I, like it sucks to do it, but then you do it, and it unlocks this like new creativity. Yeah, I, I exactly. Stuff around all the time. Um, yeah, dope. Then dude. My two HS eights back there that are just sitting, uh, acting as a table to. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, want to be the first studio to have a floor to ceiling Ace of Spade wall? Oh man! Well, you're you're on your way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm building it up. So I was actually at the LCBO and I told the lady, I'm like, I need 18 more bottles. Yeah, kind of like as a flex. <laughs> they don't really have them and yeah exactly it's hard to get them and she's like you know what's funny I have 22 in stock I'm like oh, oh. oh she called me <laughs> yeah now, now you actually have to buy them <laughs> I was like wow I'm gonna come back <laughs> yeah I left my uh, wallet in the car yeah gotta go <laughs> but yeah I wanna do it it's just like they get really shaky so that's actually something I was gonna talk to you about uh, for the spot that that we're building I wanna find a way to anchor them cause they get shaky if I put another layer like, yeah yeah we need like brackets or something. Nice. Yeah, we'll we'll, yeah. we'll build we'll build a custom uh, Ace of Spades diffuser or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you think it'll work? We can uh, we can we can draw something up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can see what's up. <laughs> Sick, yeah. dude. Yeah, man. So that's the spot. Um, nice, man. And then obviously over here you just have like your kind of like um, stuff to make it at home and comfortable in the sessions. Just like kind of mini kitchen. Yeah, all, all, kitchen all your man. stuff just to keep uh, keep your artists and people in the session. Bro, if you work with the R&B singers, you know their favorite part of the whole stuff. Watch this. Like, lemon ginger tea and natural organic honey. Yeah. Oh, this there is you the go. Stuff they're like, oh my god. Yeah. You understand this so well. It's like the cheapest stuff ever, but that's like the best vocal plugin. You have to tell them, hey, check out. I have this. I have this hardware piece of gear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a mug. It's a <laughs> mug of tea. You should mount it to the rod. Yeah. Bro, lemon ginger would be a sick like plugin of VST for vocals. Hey. Like R&B. You heard it here first. <laughs> Sick, dude. Something we can do, yeah. Yeah, so nice, space, man. man. And then the couch that you're sitting on, little, like, bar here for when things Sorry. get uh, fun and wild. Exactly. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Sick, dude. Well, um, how about we check out the vocal booth, and then we can uh, we can check out your mic, and then uh, after that, yeah, we can maybe talk about uh, some of your production stuff, get to hear, Love hear go, some man. music. Let's get yeah, into it. Let's check out the booth. Yeah, that's the only thing that kind of like I would say I would want to fix about the space is that the access to the booth is through a, a public hall. But you have like the private entrance there. And obviously there's no one ever here in this building, so it's great. Yeah. Um, this is the booth. Uh, running a U87 AI. Dope. Nice little mic. This is kind of like the mic that people who don't really know mics well think is the Ferrari of mics. Yeah. You know, but they may not sound the best on it. It might not be the right mic for them, but they love that it's here. Um, yeah, I love this mic too. It's really good. It sounds nice. It's probably the workhorse. It doesn't... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is like the... the go-to. The go-to <laughs> condenser yeah. mic for, for most studios, right? Is some sort yeah, of yeah. variation of the U87. We start here, and then like a lot... One of the things that... I'll show you another mic that I just bought recently. It's not hooked up yet, but... This, um, the UAD, the Sphere DLX. Cool. It's like a modeling mic. We could open that and check it out. Oh, yeah. There we go. They're getting an unboxing video, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you should chop this up and just do this separate. <laughs> um, yeah, it comes with, like, a little card. Don't be looking at my registration. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> and... Yeah, it's a pretty cool mic. And I like the reason I, I made this purchase is it's cool to be able to get an artist to say like okay let's try a different mic and through this one I believe it's thirty eight different mics so you could try two condensers sick yeah that's cool man yeah there's I know there's a few different options out there now for modeling kind yeah. of microphones like there's I've heard of the slate one there's this one as well um Townsend was the one I think UAD bought that, right? so this that's became, yeah, that's yeah. the mic that um my buddy has um my buddy Luca has at his studio that uh, we recently tracked on with uh with Cardo yeah it's a cool it's a cool uh cool little piece of kit man yeah it's like it's neat for an artist who wants to find the mic that sounds good for them it's also a good travel mic so yeah I can like five of them right and it's like 
after the U87, if you don't like that one, let's find a sound that you like here, and then you know which one to actually invest in. So exactly. Try it before you buy it, but yeah. it still sounds really good. It's got like a double diaphragm. Cool. And the most annoying part about this mic, bro, that people don't realize, including me, until I bought it, like, <laughs> didn't research it as much as I should have, to be honest, but it's actually a stereo uh, output. Oh, wow. So it's not mono. So when you yeah. actually record, you have to record it in stereo. Yeah. Yeah, because it captures two different uh, diaphragms. That's dope. Yeah. That's really cool. I didn't know that at all about this thing. It's kind of a trip out to be recording and seeing like the left and right channel, you know, because so you record mono. Does the output of this mic go, it goes to the power uh, box or it goes to a separate box? Because that's not an XLR co cord. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So it actually, bro, you notice everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's too many pins in here. Yeah. I'm like, that's not an XLR. Yeah, I'll show you the cable. Oh, wait, where is the cable? Um, the cable should be laying on the floor, actually. Yeah, you got to see this cable. It actually comes out of stereo. So this cable is the one that plugs in. And cool. it actually has a left and right channel on yeah. the other side. So a lot of times you buy this mic and you actually need two inputs to run yeah. a mic, right? So it's like one thing that you should kind of be aware about about this mic. That's Special cool. cord too. Um, but yeah, I like it. I've used it probably for four sessions. This is relatively new as well. Um, but it's cool to try different mic nice. options. Yeah, exactly. That's dope. And yeah, like, and the the UA modeling, like, even just through their plugins, we already know is so good. So like, I can only imagine the mic modeling too is. Yeah, they've it's done all such it's a all good top job, yeah. top notch. Yeah. Like I've actually compared it. We should do a, a YouTube video on your channel. Compare this version of the eighty seven AI with the actual eighty seven. Yeah, that'd be I've interesting. I've compared it with an artist, and it's super close. Like the in a blind test, they preferred this one. But then when I turned on the Shelfer channel preamp, yeah. like, obviously the U87 sounds better. So the other thing too is this can't go in a preamp. It has to go straight in. Like straight the to the, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you could, you know, send it out after. Um, Interesting, man. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool, Mike. A little different way of doing things. Probably pretty good at tracking drums. That's dope. Yeah, I'm sure it's <laughs> sick. It's like a stereo room mic or, yeah, that's that's really cool. Yeah, then I have this one here too that honestly, like you can tell it doesn't get used much by the way it's getting treated. <laughs> <laughs> what is this one? This is kind of like the cousin that shows up that nobody likes at Christmas dinner. Um, this is the AKG, what is it called? Uh, something 900, the solid tube. Okay. Yeah, so it's a tube mic. Um, you know, like this one's very controversial. You're going to get a lot of controversial comments. Some people love this <laughs> mic, other people hate it. It's old and it still has some value, but... To be 100% honest with you, I haven't really had many people choose this one. Yeah. So I kind of just parked it. Yeah, she's banished to the floor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you sit there until someone chooses you. Yeah. <laughs> You're in timeout. Yeah. Microphone um, timeout. Yeah, and then the monitor here is one thing that's kind of unique. I actually got that tip from Jesse Young at Secret Weapon Sound. Shout out to him. Like, he kind of put me on the idea for that. He has it in his studio. Um, it's cool, right? I wanted to mount it here. I haven't done that yet, but the idea behind having it here is a lot of time an artist would be like, you know, think about it. They, they close their eyes a lot of the time, put the headphones on. They'll be like, remember, go to that part when I said pull up to your trap and do this. I'm like, man, I'm not actually like fully listening. I'm trying, <laughs> to, make sure, <laughs> yeah. trying to make sure the signal's coming in. You're, good, you're, right? you're steering, yeah. steering the ship. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so then that monitor is cool because then they could say, go to like bar 24. Yeah, and exactly. I actually really right? love that for communication, yeah. Yeah, no, that's perfect. So it's been good, yeah. Dope, man. And this is little like air purifier. Nice. For, you know, people who like to have a breath of fresh air inside. Exactly. The <laughs> and then we did the... We actually do have the videos on the channel of uh, the build that we did here in the vocal booth, uh, the clouds and these big uh, six foot panels that we did in here. So refer to that video if you want to check out the acoustics side. But this Buddy, is more you so. Killed his job, honestly. <laughs> like I, when before this, I don't know if you remember what was here, right? Yeah. Like these crappy little tiles that you get off Amazon. But it's it's not disrespect. It's it's a good start, but just like doesn't do too much to the low end yeah super the high frequency so like when you put these up here man like quality of the vocal like i was gonna get a carpet but i'm like it's so dead and flat already that yeah. i'm gonna just leave it yeah nice Once man yeah natural. this this is a really fun one to do for sure and like the yeah. the the staggered with like having the ceiling height to do some stuff like this is always super cool and um 
yeah, the the crushed velvet is dope. Yeah, bro. Like artists love it. They're like whoever did this had vision. So like you know, obviously you were involved with the project, and it's like when they're in here, they're like it feels like it feels like a vibe. Yeah, it's dope. the best combo you really get. You know, like there's yeah. an energy to it. Exactly. So sick, dude. Yeah, man. Um, All right, sick man. Yeah, let's let's hear some. Well, I guess before we get into some music, let's um, let's have a bit of a talk about kind of what you do as a producer and just. Yeah, just let let us know what what you've been working on, and um, we'll be able to put like all your links and stuff in the description so people can check out your work as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, dude, tell tell us about three P. Tell us about tell us about you, and yeah, man, that's cool. Yeah, thanks, man. So like, oh, where do I start? It's like a whole story. Like, <laughs> music production is, is something I've kind of done my whole life, and like I've always been involved in music in some way. But when I was younger, I had a studio that was set up uh, with with a business partner that sadly passed away. And just the circumstances around it, like it's, it's really greasy. I don't really want to get too much into it, but basically I took that as a sign from the universe. Like, you know, you should just take a break from this stuff. Um, so I did take a break. It ended up being a long break, probably like 15 years, wow. to be honest with you. Yeah. So like I went into uh, work at Scotia Bank. I got into trading, you know, like I lived kind of a completely different life, but the whole time I'm walking around hearing like melodies, Yeah. you know what I mean? And then, um, I met Jesse actually from Secret Weapon Sound through, I had like a grant through my business to, to give artists from Toronto a chance to put their music out, right? So cool. we gave this grant and then we went to record at Diamond Factory. Okay, yeah. yeah and that's, that's where I actually met Jesse. And then, you know, Jesse's a great guy, amazing engineer. You know, I love that guy. So then him and I started kind of chopping it up and the, I became kind of a partner with him in a new studio. And bro, sitting there watching him like, he had a night where he invited a whole bunch of producers, you know, like super talented Toronto producers. And like, we were just cooking up and I was like, man, like just something in me was like, I have to do this again. Yeah. <laughs> right. And like, luckily, you know, I, I, I saved some good money and through trading, I was able to sort of be able to start the business at a level that I wanted to be at before. Yeah. So the gift of this 15 minute break is like this 15 year break is that <laughs> I got to come back strong you know, but I missed it a lot, bro. So like, just to be able to do this, like you have no idea how fulfilling it is to me. Like, That's sick, dude. Yeah. I guess the message to people watching this is like, sometimes you'll have these tough days where like, you know, you, you, you get told no, or like people say like they don't fuck with your music or whatever the case is, you might feel discouraged, but I'm telling you, imagine not being able to do it for 15 years. Yeah. Like, you know, just appreciate that. You just have the opportunity to sit down and like create something. Cause yeah, I suppressed it for a very long time. So, like, yeah, I guess that's the drive behind it. So, I did get back into it, like, two years ago. Um, started with just a little keyboard. Uh, downloaded FL Studio Christmas mm. Eve. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I got a holiday from trading. I'm going to mess around. And Hell, yeah. It's been two years. I've put in, um, I have a program that tells me hours, 6,000 hours in, like, two years, bro. Wow. So I got yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then started building out the studio one piece at a time. So now I just produce hip hop, trap, pop, um, work with artists locally and abroad, um, getting some, like some decent wins from just like the online hustle, hitting people up in DMS, you know, like it's a business at the end of the day. Yeah. It's like, I, I missed the music, but then when I got into it, I was faced with the reality that like, if you're going to do this as a hobby, it's one thing, if you're going to do it professionally, like you got to go back to the grind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. For real. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like when I first started, bro, I started with kind of like, when I left music in my early 20s. So when I started back in production, it's kind of like I traveled back to my early 20s. Yeah. You know, I started making those same mistakes. Like I had a period of adjustment. But yeah, so now I just produce um, in the studio. I also engineer with with clients that, you know, I work with. Like it's a private spot. And I think that's the great part about it. It's like we lock in. We, you know, sense the energy, try to decide we're going to create it and we yeah. do everything here, like full stack. We start from like where you're sitting on the couch. I've had so many chats with artists about like from the very beginning, not just like I wrote this verse. Like, hey, what are you trying to make people feel? Yeah. Okay, it's a love story. Are you on the giving or receiving end? Are you the heartbreak person who has a broken heart? Or are you breaking the heart? Yeah. Are you really like, you know, <laughs> yeah. have like a 20, 30 minute chat. And then once it's time to actually produce, it happens quick. Yeah. So yeah, we made a lot of like lot of music in this studio and like it's just starting to trickle out now uh starting to get released so i'm really excited yeah Sick, grateful man. too yes sir all the artists that trust me with their work but yeah just production recording with some of the artists but yeah mostly production in the studio the spots mostly like creating beats 
uh, working it myself, other producers to do collabs. Nice, yeah. man. Sick, dude. And then you were you were mentioning to me that you just got a movie sync or a... yeah, bro. I'm I'm so grateful. Like that's so sick. Uh, man, love to the universe. Whoever's up there pulling strings, yeah. doing a good job for me. That's yeah. amazing, man. Congrats, dude. Thank you, brother. Yeah, I'm actually gonna play you guys that song uh, that I ended up getting a sync license. It's out. It's with an artist named After the Wave. Um, him and I, we actually met through a, a friend of ours, and bro, we in six months, I think we have like seventy plus songs. Wow. Catalog, yeah. Nice so man. In. Fire. So yeah, it's like we're getting those little wins, and you know, I know in music it can be frustrating, like putting your heart into stuff and then being like, when stuff gonna pay off? But bro, like when you least expect it. Yeah. To, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the only way that it does is if you put all the work leading up to that moment. Exactly. And then exactly, it's it's almost always like factors that are out of our control. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and then uh, yeah, then that's that's usually when like the the biggest uh the biggest like blessings come in right so it's um yeah it's I really have something to share on that actually it's kind of wild if we have time for it like yeah for sure um a lot of the times when i've tried to make a plan in life where i've actually thought and strategized I'm like this is how it's gonna go it's never worked that way yeah right the way that i actually get the win is so much more efficient and quicker and in a way that i've never thought of so like all you have to do really is not make a plan but like hold the vision of what you want and it's gonna bring you. Yeah, to this and just keep kind working. Of and crazy. But, <laughs> no, it's it's true though. Like, cause yeah. anytime you have like a super rigid kind of expectation, like you're setting yourself up to just be let down and to be discouraged. Yeah. But like, exactly, you no, know, it makes sense. Like, if the if the vision is there and you're just working towards it, and like, you can be rigid on your vision, but you don't have to be rigid in your action and and in Ooh. your execution, right? Like, exactly. cause there's there's so many, and just in music in general, like it's. It's nothing is like a straight line in music. Like it's always, yeah. oh <laughs> it's, my God. You're, there's some, some sort of twists in the road. Like no matter what you're yeah. trying to get done in Just music, right? Just so, first open it. That's only yeah. that's a straight line. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> but yeah, you're so right, bro. Be like, be rigid in what you want, but not in the plan. Because a lot of times when you have a plan, as humans, we feel like confident because like this is what we're gonna do. But how many doors are you closing on what else is yeah. possible that you could have done instead, right? Exactly. And like I found that when I was kind of doing it stubborn and like. This is how it's gonna happen. I wasn't really getting any W's. I was just like working hard, spending money on all this stuff. And then when I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just have fun and like think of what I want and let it come to me. Things started happening. Like, bro, last night, 111 in the morning, I noticed the clock, and then at 222 in the morning. Like, those are angel numbers. And then I just found out this morning that there was a sync deal. I knew something was coming. So, yeah. Bro, it, it's a beautiful thing, man. Energy, the universe, it's it's yeah, like I'm a big believer of it, manifesting and stuff. So yeah, I just got a sync there. Um, I got a few feature deals with some artists in the U.S. Can't say yet, but like I'm really excited about that. Nice man. That I'll be dropping under my own um, imprint. Dope. So yeah, bro. Been Sick working. dude. Hell yeah. Yeah. Man, on that note, let's uh, yeah, let's let's hear some stuff. Yeah, man, let's hear some let's hear some slappers. I'll let's play some let's, hear, slappers let's hear some eight oh eight slappers.
funny. This beat, I actually thought of calling you to do the drums. Oh, yeah? I'm like, this sounds sick with live drums. That'd be yeah. cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dope, dude. Yeah, bro. So that's that. Like, I just work on many different sounds. Like, I don't know. Sometimes it'll just... Like, I don't know. My, my process is a little different. I'll meditate before every session, and then whatever I feel, I try to create it. And a lot of the time, it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, it's, it's got to come out somehow, yeah, right? Bro, so exactly. it's better off that it comes out yeah. in the music than, uh, than you, you go off and do something crazy, Bonnie, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Local news at six. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, hey, I know that guy. Yeah. Hopefully for good reason. The yeah. And uh, I just want to extend a huge thank you to you, man. And we really appreciate you taking the time to show us around your spots, talk about your gear, and to tell us about your musical pursuits. And um, yeah, man, looking forward to uh, the work we got going on, on on the back. And we'll we'll have yeah. uh, we'll maybe have some videos of Another that. Videos coming, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe in a couple of months we'll have we'll have some more kind of content to show you. We got a little surprise, um, yeah. For sure. But uh, but yeah, dude, we really appreciate it, man. And. Uh, Hope you have a good, good cook up, man. And hell yeah, dude. Yeah, bro. Thank you so much for thank visiting. Thank you. And yeah, thanks for putting this stuff out. And I love what you do, bro. You're great at like the construction business. At, well, not construction, but the acoustic treatment of studios. Like you're a grinder, a great person. Happy we met. And like, yeah, like this, what you're doing adds so much value. So thank you for coming by and like, you know, creating that outlet for people to participate. So yeah, thanks for coming by. Three I appreciate that, bro. Thank you, man. Hopefully I make some fire today. Hell yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. You ain't got to go Later. home. We got to go home. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's here. get out. <laughs>